Hello everybody and welcome to this little video. I've been joined here by Matt Taylor of Rupes. Hello. Matt is known as the Wolverine of the West, aren't you? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe indeed. Matt, uh, you essentially run uh, the southwest region for Rupes? It's the south of the UK, so anything from Birmingham downwards basically. Gotcha. And so the other half of your team is David, of course, who we've That's interviewed correct. in the past. Yep. And he's based in Milton Keynes, and I imagine deals with Milton Keynes and above. That's correct. Yeah, Northern. And you're based Exeter where? That's correct. Down in Exeter. Yep. Down in Exeter. So um, in terms of uh, the amount of detailing goes on there, there's actually quite a hub of detailing in the West Country in terms of detailers. There's a fair bit going on. and I'm Dis discovering it as I'm going along so there's quite a lot going going on down in the southwest so I'd like to get to meet you guys and make sure you're using the right products and so on and so forth so find me come and find me yeah and um, one thing which I really like is you actually have more often than not see with a machine in your hands so you're technically I imagine technical sales representative and management yeah. side but more often than not Matt's actually got a machine and we've been playing today playing we've been testing like proper adults Proper work. Um, the force rotation devices, one of which, of course, is the Rupes Millet. So uh, I gave uh, you a call only yesterday and just said, hey, um, could you bring your Millet up? Um, and it was very grateful that he did. Um, so uh, how long have you been working for Rupes? So I started in 2005, so it's just over 14 years now. Wow. Yeah. Um, and you told me earlier that uh, you are 41 years and six years old. <laughs> Correct. So um, <laughs> we're doing it that way. Um, and what I wanted to do today really was a couple of things. First of all, I want to talk about some of the more recent Rupes inventions, which I'm sure many of our watchers will be interested in. Then I want to talk a little bit about Pad Tech. Um, and that kind of clips in nicely. Uh, there's a segue or a segue, I think they call it, because they've got some new woolen pads. And um, yeah, then just sort of chew the crud and, and also listen and talk about the uh, machine testing. That okay. We did today. Yeah. Sounds good. So um, you've got a new piece of plastic there. Oh, in front here. In front here. Right. Okay. This is the new tool holder. It's been out for a little while now. It's wall mounted. Basically, you help put the tool in this part here. Hang on, hang on. Props. There we go. So I'll hold it. Are you feeling strong? I am. Goody goody. Like so. And then you'll coil up the cable and you'll hook it on this bit here. Now, the problem is, of course, is the Rupert's insistent have really nice long cables, so it takes ages to coil up. But where would you put the cable? It's just. I can't see. You can't yeah. see. Sort of. It'd be hanging around this sort of area here. Can you see it? Oh, yes, I see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So you put the cable around that and it's nice and neat. Um, and so when it comes to tool holders, there are various pros and cons. You get the universal ones that kind of fit everything just. You get the ones that are tailored like this one. And it just means that if you have a melee, does that fit all Rupes machines? It does, even the Nano. That's brilliant. Oh, hence the little notch here for your little Nano, yes. I would imagine. And sanders. And sanders. And they look really smart when put on the wall. Um, let me have a touch. I haven't actually had much of a play with this. Even though it's plastic, and I know a lot of people f prefer metal, it's pretty rigid, but it doesn't feel particularly brittle. Um, and it's sort of nicely finished, obviously, with your repairs logo and stuff. So I can imagine it's ABS. I'm cheating because it says ABS. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I would imagine uh, with these all lined up on the wall with all your repairs machines in, that would look really rather nice. Yes, there's a lovely picture in our catalogue with all the tools lined up. And we've got it in our detailing academy in Italy. Uh, and how much does this cost? 38 euros is the list price. Okay, and for so, those of us who want euro? Well, I don't know because we don't sell direct. So if you go to your local stockist, they'll be able to give you a price on the uh, holder. And the part number is 9. Dot Holder. Nine dot holder. Well, you heard it here first and probably <laughs> only here. Um, yes. But uh, yeah, so 35, 40 quid. Um, that's quite a lot of money for a piece of plastic, but having a nice, keen, beam, clean workshop is priceless. So um, exactly. we'll, we'll look at that one. But no, nice piece of kit. Um, next, we have a bottle of stuff. Um, what does that say? Uno Protect. Uno Protect, but uh, okay. And the O has got a one in it. So it's very, it's, it's a nice looking, nice looking bottle. Tell us what this does. So you've got the one in the uh, Part of the O there because yes. it's a single step uh, cutting and comp cut oh, so so compound. One step compound. Okay. Yeah. So predominantly it's been designed for say car showrooms, forecourts, quick detailing. Mm -hmm. It also has a bit of a sealant in it as well. It's got canoe wax in it. Mm -hmm. So depending on the type of pad you use with this, you have different grades of cut. Oh, it smells lovely. It smells of Armagnac. Um, I don't know what it takes, but probably best not on camera again. Probably again. Um, but, um, so, and the idea of this you would use, I guess, with a sort of soft pad and a DA. We recommend generally the yellow wool, okay. which we'll talk about in a moment. And what that will do, it will cut and polish at the same time and take some minor defects out. If you need to be finer than that, you can use the foam. Mm -hmm. And that will just give you a nice gloss. But if you go with the blue wool, you can cut even more. So you've got different grades 
to suit the type of um, imperfection you need to remove. Which brings up a really important topic, well two really. One is both Flex and Rupes, uh, distinct from a lot of other machine producers, uh, produce whole systems. So you get the machine, the pad, and the compound and so they're designed to work with each other both in terms of things like balance with a DA um, and in terms of the actual medium the friction medium if you like the abrasive and the, and the liquid abrasive so one thing also to consider is that everybody says oh if you need to cut a lot you need an aggressive cutting compound well remember that it's not just the compound that's doing the cutting it's your medium so again you can mix things you can have a, a quite an aggressive pad with quite a mild compound and you can switch it up and yes. work on systems that suit that particular car and that particular paint what we do we always recommend then you do a test area first no matter what you do. Yes. So you'll get your combination right and then you'll hit the car with it. And take paint depth readings if you can as yep. well um, because we've seen a lot of enthusiasts who've got cars that didn't know were resprayed uh, and they've gone machining away thinking you know oh, there's lots of paint on here and they've misinterpreted their readings and as a result accidents have happened. So um, this brings us on briefly to the Millet. The Millet is how long it's been out for a couple of years now? A couple so. of years now yeah. Um, what was fascinating is we got and we got it on film as well we got Matt testing out the new um, um, machines from Makita and Flex and doing trying to compare things um, with the Mille and we've done lots of scientific testing so we've had vibrometers and uh, uh, noiseometers or whatever you want to call them <laughs> monitoring um, these machines while they're working at their low speed and their high speed and we've also uh, done a very cool slow-mo graphic because um, with these machines yes they uh, rotate because it's forced rotation like a rotary but they also oscillate like a DA and what's really interesting is they all have slightly different throws. So the uh, the throw on this is five mil, about five mil. Whereas the flex ones, it's eight mil. So they've got a bigger throw. But when we put um, a slow mo high speed camera, really, I get a slow mo of the moving around within one rotation. This oscillates how many times? Fourteen. So there are fourteen kind of off centric, if you like, oscillations within one rotation, um, and that's why, for example, here the RPM of this goes up to five hundred and thirty five. But then you would times that by fourteen to get your OPM. One would imagine. I think so. I think that works. Something, something like that, or something seven, like that. or half of it. But anyway, maths. So hey, <laughs> who cares? Um, but that's why you've got some of these with a, a massive OPM, and people are comparing that to an RPM and saying, well, there's a huge difference. Um, but what was interesting is both the flex machines um, oscillated 10 times. That's correct. Um, for one rotation, and the uh, we found the Makita was 10 as well, didn't we? Yes, we did. And with the uh, the flex was 8 mil. Yes. And the Makita was 5.5. Yes, Makita's 5.5. So the Makita um, oscillates as much as the flex, but has a throw um, slightly less than the Rupert's. No, slightly, yeah, less, like, slightly less than the flex, yes. much less than the Rupert. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's all we should have revised for this. Year. <laughs> um, Are we winging this? I don't know. <laughs> of course, we wing everything. It's called life, baby. Um, so, the um, inter anyway, my point being is that don't just look at the raw stats because quite often there's some really important technical details underneath that that you need to consider. Yeah. So, in terms of the amount of movement and therefore correction that you'll be doing on a panel, um, you can't just look at the RPM because if they're doing more oscillating per RPM, per rotation so to speak um, then it's not a fair comparison. Basically what's happening is the grit is traveling further with the amount of orbits per rotation with the Millet even though it's only a five mil orbit and that means basically you can get a little bit closer to the edges as well because you've got a smaller orbit. That's a very fair point that's the thing with the long throw DAs and you're going up to the edge of something obviously if you've got a movement of you know 15 or 21 mil you don't want to be going too close to the edges because there's so much movement there and that's why again rotaries have a place as well of course because they spin on the spot. Talking of spinning, uh, we have some of these. Now, we interviewed David Kendall, your colleague, um, in London at the May Vinci show earlier this year, and he, he alluded to these, but he didn't have anything that we could feel and touch. And with wool pads, it's really important to feel and touch. Of course. Um, only I can do this here because we did it last time and it got stuck on like that, and it, <laughs> it was awkward. Um, but tell me about these two wool pads. Okay, so as people probably can tell, we have a system. So blue is normally our coarsest colour, mm -hmm. so that's an indication it's the coarsest one, so obviously this is the coarse uh, wool, and it's got dual density, so it's got two lengths, and basically what it will do, it will cut and polish at the same time, so it's a little bit more aggressive because it's got the shorter mm -hmm. weave, and then you've got the longer weave, which also helps hugging the contours of the vehicle, 
so you can make sure you get full contact whilst you're doing it. And it's quite a thin pad as well, so you've got an element of flexibility. And this is That's right. to be designed to be used with which machines? For the dual action machines, so random orbital and gear driven triple action. Gotcha. Not so rotary. Not rotary. So we're talking melee and we're talking big foot LHR 15 Mark 1, 2, and 3s. Basically. And, LHR, um, and, and do you do little ones for your little duettos? Yes, you've got it for the duetto, you've got it for the 75, and you also got it for the. Uh, Nano as well, both so sizes. That's keen. I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen wool being used on a Nano. Ah, very, very good because obviously, because it's a lightweight tool with the wool, it's got an extra bit of cut and a bit of polish as well, so it's, it gives it a little bit more of an oomph nice. when you use it. Nice of course, we mentioned that we weren't using this on the rotary, but we have our own rotary. Uh, wall pads as well. Which has got a similar sort of construction? It's a, it's a, more, it looks more of a traditional, uh, it's blue and white and it sort of curves around the edges in three different sizes as well. And if you want to see a picture of that, I happen to know it was an issue 8 of the Pro Detailer magazine because oh, I remember sticking it in there. Um, and I thought, are these organic or are these synthetic? And I still think that. What, what are they? The, uh, what, the, uh, the, what, the, these this ones? One. I mean, did you kill sheep to make this? Basically we had to, unfortunately, okay. but they were sheep that were quite happily uh, wanting to oh, you contribute to the detail. You've had a chat with them yes. and you've gone through yeah, it and right. said, look, you're going to be making We have a shiny. farm, a special farm for them. Special farm. Yes. Of course, then we've got the yellow, yep. which has got a longer thread to it, mm. which means it's going to get more of a, a polishing sort of motion, but it does cut very well. This works very well with the Uno Protect. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and again, with the foam back and the, the weave of it, it can it will hug the contours of the vehicle, so you got full contact rather than it being too rigid. Gotcha. And this is yeah, this is single density, isn't it? So it's longer. Yeah. It's density. just one one length. Yes. So one length. Dual so density would be two different lengths. Only one type of sheep have to murder for this. Um, so um, and in terms of costs and stuff like that, any ideas? Off the top of my head, no. Mm. But again, we don't sell direct to, to the end user. So if you go to your local stockist or whoever you use. Just tell them it's the Rupes roundable to wall pads and they'll be able to give you an accurate price in pounds. And again, you can get this for Duetto 75 Hybrid. Yep, all the way through. through, all sizes. Marvellous. Okay, Koki. So we've now covered the, the, the most recent inventions from Rupes. Am I going to be able to twist your arm and find out some information about some new products you were telling me off camera? Um, there is uh, a variant of the Nano tool. Mm -hmm. Basically what that's going to be is a Delta sander and uh, I think it's a 50 or 60 mil circular pad to go on it as well. Uh, they've removed the spindle lock button on the front because mm -hmm. you're not going to be changing the movement of the tool. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the pads are uh, fastened with magnets. So you don't kind need of, to yeah. hold things down to twist them around to get them off. Literally you just pull it off and pull the, push, push the new one on. Uh, it's more for sanding, woodworking and things like that but it's still got the nano body and there can be many many different applications that we don't even know yet mm. which may, may be used in the detailing market. So that's something that may, will be coming out soon. And that's available in long and short neck? Yes. And the delta, when you were saying delta pad, I was thinking what the hell, and then I saw it, so it's kind of triangular. It's triangular, it? so it's, it's ideal for getting into corners basically. Gotcha. So with a circular pad, if you're trying to sand something flat which has got corners, mm -hmm. you're never going to reach that corner. So you can get right into the corner with it. And also because it's uh, magnet mounted, you can turn it around three times. So you, if you just wear out the first, the front point mm -hmm. of the abrasive, you can turn it around and then carry on. Yeah. So it's an interesting thing, um, and because also you've got your range of uh, pneumatically powered sanders as well, which I know a lot of detailers who are lucky enough to have big compressors, and you mean big compressors for some of them, um, <laughs> to uh, to do sanding because that obviously sand power, uh, air power tools have got some benefits over electric ones when it comes to sanding. That's right. I mean they've got smaller bodies, they're lighter. Um, they can be quieter sometimes, depending on your compressor you're using and the airflow you've got. But yeah, so they, there's features and benefits of using pneumatic tools, but obviously with electric tools, you you've can got take them anywhere. Scorpio E, haven't you? Yeah, the Scorpio E is the brushless motor uh, palm sander. Mm -hmm. um, that should be available for sale around about October, towards the end of the year, I believe. But we're just doing final developments on that to make sure that it's uh, fully robust and ready for the market. Brilliant. Okay, well, I wanted to have a little bit of a chat about pads in more depth because you'll notice uh, there are different approaches to pads. We've talked to lots of different pad manufacturers uh, and to different polishing compound manufacturers and to machine manufacturers, and they've all got a slightly different take on pads. Um, and so today, when we were using the different machines, it was interesting looking at the pros and cons of the different systems. So, for example, the flex pads are a little bit more conventional, they're a bit thicker. Uh, they've got kind of a what we call a beveled edge, which call it beveled rather than chamfered. Uh, yes. Yes. So kind of a curved edge and uh, they don't have the hole 
Now, we talked to Flex about it, and they said, ah, oh, I'm not going to do a German accent, that would be really offensive, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but um, the, they actually said the whole was counterproductive, because it kind of created hot spots. Whereas on the flip side, your approach to the hole in the pad is? There's two reasons. One reason is airflow, because our backing plates have holes in, and the centre hole has holes going through the side, so it dissipates the, the heat. And also, because you're using dual action uh, movement tools, it's very important to make sure the pad is centralised onto the backing plate. So we can marry up the hole in the centre with the hole in the backing pad, uh, the, the, uh, the, pad. the pad itself, and we know it's central, so we're not going to get any sort of vi extra vibration for it being offset. The one thing I quite like is the storage point of view. Oh, and that, of course, that. of course. So, um, you know, from a magazine point of view, we, we cannot have a particular opinion on things, but it's nice to express both sides of the mm -hmm. argument, and whether you hold or not to hold is up to you entirely. Yes. Um, but what I would suggest, again, is make sure you're using the pads that are, if you're using manufacturer pads that are manufactured by machine manufacturers, um, to use the ones that they suggest with the machines. So, again, as we point earlier, uh, don't use a DA pad on a rotary. No, and um, also the pads are weighted in the Rupert system, so the dual action pads are weighted for the dual action tools, the rotary pads are weighted for the rotary tools. Cool. And so, different constructions as well because of the different types of forces that the tool would create on the surface. In terms, yes, so with a DA you've got more of a sideways lateral force, don't you, whereas yes. with a, as opposed to a twisty force. Yes. We're being very scientific. Well, yeah. there you go. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, um, developments in the future. We know about the machines coming out. Where do you think, in terms of technology, do you think you're going to be going? Because um, if you look at the two big, in this country, the two big machine manufacturers, Flex and Rupes, mm -hmm. and they've all got their defining features. So for example, if you're a Rupes fan, you'll like the thinner body, you'll like the kind of the nose, whereas for Flex people, it's a big, chunkier machine, you get a different sort of grip on it. And also with a shorter nose, you might be able to see a little bit more of the top, pros and cons. Um, Flex have slightly stolen the march on battery technology, haven't they? Yes, it's something obviously that's uh, quite important to look at. Um, we are looking at this situation and we, we have many irons in the fire of this sort of thing, lots of things going on. I'm not privy to most of it because uh, Marco Dinko, Marco Garavaglia and all the people in Rupes in Vermezzo in Italy are heads down, looking at all different scenarios, watching what other people are doing, making sure we can see the pros and the cons of which way certain tool manufacturers are going and then we'll do our own testing and we'll make our own choices which way we want to go with that. Um, I don't think there's anything in the pipeline coming up soon, mm -hmm. but of course cordless technology is very, very uh, prevalent out there and we've got to make sure we get it right when we release something like that. I think you're absolutely right. It was interesting when we last year talked about and, and showed the latest flex uh, cordless tools, um, there was a lot of inertia on both YouTube and Facebook. You had a lot of the kind of the old school going, oh, we don't want batteries, oh, you'll never get as much power and stuff. And initially we were very much, well, actually we've tested them and they're pretty good. Um, they are pretty good. You're having a play around earlier mm -hmm. today. You know, they, they've, got some, they've got some go to them. However, in the force rotation area where you are asking a lot of your power source in terms of watts and stuff, for example, um, the uh, XC that we were testing has 50, uh, 1050 watt input, but the output equivalent was something in the region of five to 600. So it was, from an efficiency point of view, because you're doing so much, there's going to be more friction in the box. Yeah. And again, I would imagine it's similar with the Rupes machine, is that for the force rotation, um, there's more of a requirement. And what we found with the cordless version is it didn't, the cordless, the 18 volt system, didn't quite have the push that right. the 240 volt system had. And while battery technology is flying along, um, the idea of producing a thousand watts of input power, over a thousand watts of input power consistently, you know, along a nice flat plane for say 30 minutes, that's a lot of energy. And also it's the weight of the battery as well, so you've got to try and get the balance of the tool right. So we've we've gone with a longer cable for now, mm -hmm. nine meter cable on all of our big, big foot tools, so you get constant power to it. Um, no, just okay. like with vehicles, with cars, electric cars, the, mm -hmm. exactly the range like is slightly you're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and with technology, technology is moving so fast these days, we should see something on the horizon uh, that would mean you've got longevity of the battery use of the, of the yeah. tool, which obviously is very important for detailing. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, I think it'll be a matter of watch this space. I mean, congrats to Flex for being the first adopters, but then, or uh, one among the first adopters, but then when Rupes come, they have the benefit. Like the VRG, it has to be said. The VRG came out in 2006, mm -hmm. and the Melee came out, what, in 2017? 
Uh, 16, 17, something 16, like that. 16, 17. So you're about 10 years of watching, and then you bought out the Millet, and the Millet is, and I don't think anybody, I don't think it's contentious to say the Millet is a much better than the original VRG, um, simply because that, you know, it's, it's 10 years newer, and we'll be able to look at the VRG and say, right, how do we make this better? So maybe you're going to do a repeat performance on the battery power kit, and, uh, and sort of take it that step on. Let's see what happens. But I just need to make one point. Yes. We, we had an anti-hologram polisher for many, many years, which is basically the same as this tool, but smaller. Okay. It was called an LK125, and it was called an anti-hologram polisher, which is exactly the same movement as this tool, a uh, slightly different body to it. Mm -hmm. But because Flex had the, uh, the system out there, the force rotation, we thought, hold on a minute, we've got this technology already, we've had it for years, let's just enlarge it, let's just make it bigger. Yeah. And let's get it out there, and that's what we did. So this is customers have the so choice. You're, you're saying that actually force rotation was kind of your idea in the 90s. We had it a long, long time ago. It's the same as our planetary sanders, for example, mm -hmm. which has got a five mil orbit, gear driven, six screw holes directly into the gearbox. We've had it for a very long time, but we okay. just bought it out in this in this format. This for us detailing lots of bits. Yes. Indeed. Well, I happen to know, I've talked a lot, obviously, with guys at all the different machine companies, and um, it's a sort of, um, it's a very jovial rivalry, I sense, because there's a lot of mutual respect for each other, um, mm. and that's one thing that I really enjoy with the machine market, the hardware market, is that the engineers, you know, I've seen engineers from all sorts of different companies sort of taking apart machines and just gawping at, at how they're being done, oh, that's clever, and oh, this is good, and, and that sort of cross fertilization of ideas. Um, Actually, you might think, oh, it's a bit underhand here and there, but as a consumer, we're the winners because, you know, they're building on each other's things. There's no point car developers developing cars independently of each other um, when actually you could learn from other people's mistakes. Exactly, and at the end of the day, it's all about the end user experience and the performance of the tool and the finish you get. So all of us are all focused on that. Mm. And again, as with all detailers, you go to a proper detailing shop and you will see a multitude of brands and pads and you'll find that maybe they're using the, the, the Rupes pads on a flex machine or a Festool or something else. Um, so it's it's the nature of it and it's the joy of detailing. So, so much choice. That's right. Anyway, Matt, I have stolen your time and I know you're desperate to escape. Um, so <laughs> Back not at all, way. not at all. Well, your visa runs out pretty soon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so we will say goodbye for now, but thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you. And uh, do subscribe to the magazine at www.pro-detailer.com uh, where you can find out much more about this force rotation test we did. It is a good one. It was fascinating. Mm. Um, and getting the stats as opposed to as in measuring the stats rather than just reading the brochures and, and the manuals and stuff, um, well, that changed things a little bit. It's, it was an eye-opener for certain things. Yes. I think, which will all be revealed in the magazine. Indeed, indeed. Great stuff. Goodbye. Thank you.